All right, man, Trippie Talk, Six Talk Show, you know what it is, man. Back in this way. All right, so look, today we're going to be talking about TDE and their 20-year anniversary plus, I think Hip Hop DX has done a countdown of the best TDE albums. And I was just talking about TDE the other day on one of my other shows. Make sure y'all go check those episodes out. Go check all my episodes out, man. I appreciate y'all. Also, too, if y'all want me to react to more Pete and Boss, because I got a lot of people saying that I should react to more of their stuff, I will definitely do that. You know what I'm saying? I still got other reactions that I have not released yet because I don't like to release reactions too often because I don't want people to believe that this is just a reaction channel. And I'll be honest with y'all, I'm just going to do whatever I think is best. Because daddy knows best, baby. Nah, but look, so we're going to get into that. Before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, single, sexy ladies. Put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, link's on the screen right there, right there, right there. Cash app, PayPal's in the description. They call me the Hidden Gem. Well, from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000. Man, let me know where you're from, man. I appreciate it. Millions of subscribers by Monday morning. Appreciate it. I appreciate everybody being here with me. Appreciate everybody for rocking with me still. And we're going to run this thing until the end of time. So, look, let's get to it, man. We're going to watch this clip, and we'll be back to discuss. All right, so, look, man, this clip comes courtesy of Justin Hunt. You know what it is, man, um, like Justin Hunt. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to get it. So Let's go. <laughs> Thought were pretty interesting. First up, we're gonna start with this story from Hip Hop DX. Now, this is the 20 year anniversary of Top Dog Entertainment. Top Dog Entertainment founded in 2004. As Lord goes, uh, Top Dog, Anthony Top Dog Tiff, he was a street dude who uh, realized that longevity doesn't really exist <laughs> in that lifestyle. And so he pivoted to music. He started a studio in Carson in his house. Uh, he and Punch taught themselves how to engineer <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, signed J-Rock. J-Rock was the first signing. Uh, he was from Watts. And um, I said this before, and I'm going to get a little bit more into uh, TD, uh, Top Dog Entertainment in a second. One of the best labels in the past 20 years especially in the past 10 years, consistency and yeah, we're going to see what this list is compiled of, but let's keep it going. Uh, uh, after that, I think you get Kendrick right after that. I think Schoolboy Q and Absol come our third and fourth there and the legacy begins. And over the past 20 years, Top Dog Entertainment, in my opinion, is the closest thing to Motown. You know, like there's whether it's R&B, whether it's it's hip hop, uh, they have genre pushing artists who always have a penchant for saying something. Um, and they just are a great example of elite top tier black music. Uh, and I personally think that they're the only independent label that can still move the industry and hip hop anyway. Um, and That's 100 percent facts. Now, I don't know about the Motown thing. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I could see him where he's coming from because they got a bunch of uh, people over there that is very good in with instrumentation. So I guess that's what he's saying. I can understand why he say that. That's, that's actually a pretty good comparison. I like that. So this is a big milestone for them. 20 years of Top Dog Entertainment. And they also, you know are having an incredible year now, which I think is really significant considering Kendrick and Dave Free 
started PG Lang, and so they're no longer technically with TDE. Now, they're TDE forever. They're always TDE. But when labels, a lot of times when labels leave, or when their premier acts leave for one reason or another, a lot of times that label is never the same. Uh, Aftermath, or excuse me, Death Row. Death Row wasn't the same after Tupac and Dre. Um, after Biggie died, Bad Boy was never the same, especially after Mace, after, when, after he left. Uh, Bad Boy was never the same. And, you know, this year you have Dochi, who is, I believe she has the most nominees for a woman rapper, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, maybe she's the only woman. For a woman rapper. Um... I understand exactly where he's coming from when he say that. <clears throat> That's true. When your premier acts leave, you your label tend to go down. And I think that it really depends on who's running the label and how you're running it because some labels do stay afloat and some labels do go down. And, you know, <laughs> look at that face. <laughs> Rapper nominated, but... She's somewhere up there. <laughs> I'm getting this wrong, but she's up for Best New Artist, Rap Album of the Year. She has two songs nominated. Uh, best Rapping Performance, I think, for Nissan Altima. And then there's a, a remix also that she's nominated for. So they've got a new star coming out of TDE this year. Schoolboy Q released Blue Lips, Fantastic Project, Absold. Soul Burger is out now. Incredible Lyricism. Uh, Sir released a, an album this year. Uh, you take all the stuff that Punch is doing with a room full of mirrors. Incredible artist over there. Uh, Daylight and Willie B. Ichiban Don just released uh, Heroes, a new Heroes project. Got to check that out. If you haven't checked that out, punch yourself in the face. Uh, and so TDE is having an incredible year in their 20th year. And so big salute to the organization. I think what they represent and their penchant for putting out just – in my opinion, the best hip hop in the space, regardless of, regard. Yeah, I have to agree. TDE has been on such a run. I think a lot of people don't even realize how good of a run TDE has been on. A lot of people don't realize it. I think a lot of people are not really paying attention until after they realize that, damn, that was from TDE too. Like, their run is incredible right now. Of, of styles. <laughs> I don't think nobody doing it like TDE. I'll be straight up. And so there's an article in Hip Hop DX celebrating 20 years of Top Dog Entertainment, and they listed the best 20 albums in the history of TDE. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's see what they got. Let's see what they got. Let's see, let's see how much we hate this list, because with lists... The goal is to hate. No, I'm joking. It's not necessarily the goal. There's no list. I don't know if you can get a list perfect. You know, the point of list is to start discussion, I think, more than anything else. I don't mean to hate on this list before really looking at it. <laughs> I'm just so used to disagreeing with lists. All right. So, which is actually kind of, that is a significant part of the fun of lists, the debate that ensues. Uh, so, Hip Hop DX, always my favorite publication. Uh, number 20, J-Rock Redemption, 2018. Okay, let's see what they said. J-Rock's sole major label album so far and responsible for the Grammy-winning hit King's Dead, Redemption is a slice of old-fashioned, well-rounded rap. It's a shame we only get albums from rock every five years or so because Redemption, Redemption hinted that he was on the verge of something bigger. Yeah. That album was pretty dope. I don't think that that was his best album, but that album was pretty dope. Um, it was pretty, it was pretty dope. Um, but it's number twenty. I mean, I don't know. I mean, let's see what else is on the list, and I could tell you if if that should be twenty. I mean, you know, we've seen that a lot lately. We've seen a lot of artists who've been taking extended periods of time off. Cardi B's been taking time off so long; it's almost like she never was on <laughs> like she's <laughs> from an album standpoint i'll say that anyway um but we saw that with kendrick absolute took a long time between projects as well 
Uh, Schoolboy Q took some significant time off. I think we're still waiting on Eastside Johnny, if I'm not mistaken. That's supposed to be J-Rock's next project, but Redemption, quality project, comes in at... Attention. Jump into Calisthenics Challenge today. 28-day Calisthenics Challenge. At 20. J-Rock, 90059. Most notable for featuring the last pure black hippie hookup with the aptly titled Vice City. 90059 is a weed-infused gangster... Yeah, it's a pretty... I like that album. I like that album, too. I actually do like that album better than uh, the one before this one, but I like that one. Rap album that's aware of its lane and speeds down in it. As their first signing, Eastside Johnny, is the solo TDE, and this is his first album. Okay, so we got 20 and 19 are J-Rock. 18, Habits and Contradiction, Schoolboy Q. As far as narrators and storytellers in hip-hop go, Schoolboy Q doesn't get... Yeah, I don't know about that album. I don't know about that one. I don't know. I think that album probably should have been 19 or 20. The credit he deserves. Nightmares on Fig Street is an intricately weaved street fable that gives his insular perspective wider meaning. While Sacrilegious is a biblical story of a killer seeking forgiveness, Hab Habits and Contradictions was also our first glimpse at Groovy Q's hit-making potential, spawning the fan-favorite Hands on the Wheel with ASAP Rocky. One second applause. I love that joint. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that I really appreciate about TDE is that they never sacrifice storytelling. All of their artists can get into a storytelling bag. Um, and both of those joints they pointed out are two of my favorite off Habits and Contradictions. I'm not mad at this list so far. 18. Schoolboy Q. All right, 17. Yeah, this list is pretty fair so far. You're right about that. You probably would switch it around a little bit, but it's only three albums in, so. Kendrick Lamar, Overly Dedicated. Made when Kendrick Lamar was just 23, Overly Dedicated proved that the future superstar was already mature beyond his years and as he offered up a preview of the brilliance to come. The Heart Part 2 and PNP 1.5 are two of the best songs, but the Compton native was still searching for an identity on the guest heavy mixtape, particularly with Lil Wayne, with the Lil Wayne impression on Michael Jordan. People used to love that song. This is my, actually my entry point to Kendrick Lamar. You know, big shout out to DJ Run P, uh, John Heredia, Johnny Walker SF. They love this album. Kelly Jones, Kelly Nicole, they love this project and they, they really put me on to this one. Like this is my entry. Yeah, Overly Dedicated was dope. <clears throat> it was a dope project. I think when uh when section eighty came, that's to me that's when I kinda looked at overly dedicated uh as something. I mean, because I actually heard I actually heard section eighty before I heard overly dedicated and then the Kendrick Lamar E P I believe was before that. Point to it and then section eighty one is the album where I was like, Okay, this guy this guy's out of here. Kendrick Lamar is different, different. 16, Absol Soul Burger. Okay. Soul Burger, number 16. That's the latest TDE project from the quietest. That's surprising that they put that at 16 when the album just came out. Um, that's surprising. So far, this list is pretty good. So far. So far. I got to see what would be before Soul Burger because I actually think Soul Burger is that phenomenal project i listen to it every day i've been listening to it since it came out that album is amazing number of black hippie created as a tribute to his late friend doe burger who he's described as the riley to his huey soul has never rapped better and continues the label's post kendrick hot streak word up shout out to soul burger number 16 one second plus 15 oxymoron schoolboy q oh, oh my god the most accessible of that album is fire. And I'm starting to question, should this album be a little bit higher? He still hasn't um, mentioned Isaiah Rashad. He still hasn't mentioned SZA or even, uh, well, Kendrick was on there as far as once. So it's all the black hippies was mentioned, but the other people haven't been. So I wonder what is going to come next.
Hughes albums, Oxymoron successfully flirts with radio hits and takes cues from the snarling Pusha T, but the former Hoover gangster crip is nothing if not addictive. Tracks such as Hell of a Night, Break the Bank, and Collard Greens, yeah, his first Hot 100 hit, remain some of the most giddy of his career. When he did Collard Greens <laughs> at the pop-out, the forum went up. It went up, man. That, I mean, this is another... That was the album where he had two different album covers. One of the album covers looked like Jesus. Like he had, he had a, a silhouette of Jesus, and then the other album cover was that. You know what I'm saying? I had the one where I had brought that CD, and I had the one where he looked like Jesus on the front. Yeah, dope, dope album. That's one of my favorite albums that he, he did. I mean, look at this. Look at this run so far. Right, you've got Redemption, 90059, Habits and Contradictions, Overly Dedicated, Soul Burger, and Oxymoron. All from the same label. The same label. The same independent label. I mean, this is what I mean when I talk about everyone, regardless of their style or sound, has something to say. They have something to say. Mm -hmm. Schoolboy Q15, Oxymoron. Okay, let's see where we go. Absol Herbert. Okay. Herbert, I definitely think Herbert is better than Soulburger. So I'm cool with this list so far in regards to that. Following a long break. I don't know. That's actually a pretty good battle to me. I listen to both of them. And I would say I'm I'm enjoying <laughs> Soulburger more. Maybe it not maybe it's not better, but I'm enjoying listening to Soulburger more. I like I like the feel of it. It just feels different to me. Soul returned in late 2022 with Herbert, one of the most valuable and varied offerings in the entire TDE discography. There are classic boom bap bangers, good man, gotta rap, emotive introspective cuts, do better, it be like that, some James Blake production, Herbert, and endless lyrical highlights to pick out. I mean, do better. I've talked about this, this project before. I've talked about how this album got me through some very difficult times in my life. That was a year my mother passed away as well. Uh, do better. There's nothing they can do that I can't do better. There's nothing I can do that I can't do better. One second applause. <laughs> Isaiah Rashad, The Sun's Tirade, reminiscent of that distinctly fuzzy Dungeon Family sound. Isaiah Rashad's sophomore LP further emphasized the Tennessee Titan as an outlier in the TDE family. The Sun's Tirade. I definitely wouldn't put that over. Uh over no um, oxymoron, nah, that would not be higher than that, sorry, no way. <clears throat> it was also put together at the height of Rashad's substance abuse issues, a struggle explicitly expressed on the album. Yeah, this album got incredible reviews when it dropped, but uh, Isaiah Rashad is also really vulnerable uh, in his music and in, in his public persona. I'm not mad at this reminiscent of that distinctly fuzzy dungeon family sound. I think he's the first one from the South on TDE. Uh, uh, does this, is this better than an oxymoron though? Yeah, it's okay. Ooh, tough call, but I'm not, look, so far I'm not mad at this list. Overall, I'm not, I'm not offended by anything I see on this list so far. The world's first titanium nonstick pan. It's gonna blow your hair back. I'm Mike Pagale, three Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Coming out of a dark writer's block and family turbulence, Kendrick's final album with TDE occasionally reached outside of its grasp, but for the most part, the lengthy and ambitious Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers was a scintillating treatise on generational trauma, celebrity culture, and family. 12. Okay, I'm not mad at this. I mean, this is an album that I think... That definitely should be no 12. I ain't gonna hold you. That should be at least five. I have not listened to all of their projects, and there's nothing you can tell me that any of them other artists has anything better than that. I mean, that's just, that's, a, okay, I'm going to put this at 12 because I got Kendrick probably higher on all the rest of his albums because you still have Damn, you still have uh, Isaiah Rashad's other album, you still have SZA, you still have SZA's two albums, you still have, I'm sure Dochi's Dochi's on here. Obviously, she's gonna be on here, and then um, you still have Schoolboy Q, and I think Absol has some other albums too. So, 
And I heard all of them, and I don't think that none of those albums is better than Mr. Monroe album, The Big Stepper. I think that album is at least top five. The only albums I see better than that is Kendrick's other three albums. It's having its year this year with a lot of the things that came up in this battle, a lot of the themes that came up in this battle. Uh, there's, a, there's a story I'm going to do reacting to uh, an analysis on this that points out how every track on here has something directly connected to this battle with Drake. Uh, that story, I'll, I'll do that story at some point. Uh, but uh, is this better than Sun's Tyrese? I mean, as a package, as a whole, I don't think very many people are putting together albums that compete with Kendrick Lamar. You know, so regardless of whether or not this is an album for everybody, for what it's attempting to do, it is it is a, a magnet. If this album was in anybody else's catalog, it would be looked at as a magnum opus. You know, That's I mean, just the level of vulnerability. That's 100 percent facts. This album would be a magnus opus if it was somebody else's album. But since it's Kendrick and he has all these good albums, it's like. That's what I was saying on the, uh, the last video, we judge. We judge a lot of artists off of their work, and they <laughs> we keep them on a high pedestal. And if they does do something that is halfway decent in our eyes, even though in other people's eyes it would be super amazing. Some some art, some fans look for the flaws and everything, and be like, "Oh, it's all right." And it's just like, "Nah, that was out of this world." But this also the quality of song making and song writing. Uh, I love Kodak Black being a literary device in this. He's almost like, he's almost like Flavor Flav <laughs> on this album. Like if, if, if Kendrick is Chuck D, if maybe outside of pol political things, if Kendrick is Chuck D, this is Kodak's, Kodak's Flavor Flav on this album. Uh, but number 12, Kendrick Lamar. 11, Blue Lips. Nah. This I is a slow Blue burn Lips for me. I'm, I'm definitely not over no Mr. Morana Big Steppers. And I absolutely like Blue Lips a lot. And <clears throat> it's not over Mr. Moron and Big Steppers. But that's another story. But Blue Lips, number 11. Just now understanding the brilliance of this album. And I think that is something that you can say about a number of different TDE projects. A lot of them are albums that grow with you. You know, a lot of times the album is where you're about to be. Uh, and sonically, I felt like this album was all over the place when I first heard it. And now it's all over the place and it makes sense <laughs> like like he is doing things sonically because his albums are generally generally very ambitious but he does stuff sonically that you're not really supposed to do <laughs> like you're not supposed to have jazzy offerings and turn up tracks on the same album <laughs> sometimes back to back <laughs> but it works it works quite well on blue lips a return to form for schoolboy q after the, uh the disjointed crash talk blue lips captures him in an, in all his singular glory complete with delirious raps and wanton excess. Q may not have the same lofty social insight as Kendrick Lamar, but what he does have in abundance is a freneticism that he always feels in control of. Tim. I don't, I don't think that that album is better than, uh, I don't think it's better than uh, what they call it, um, oxymoron either. I definitely don't think that that's better than oxymoron. Let's keep it going. Isaiah Rashad, The House is Burning. I love this joint. I love this joint. I wrote, this was on my list, year-end list for Revolt in 2021. This is a fantastic project. The House is Burning was Zaywop's post-rehab return following a hazy few years of drink, drugs, and financial difficulty. It was the first album he had ever made completely sober, and he has never sounded so confident in his rhymes. Appropriately, The House is Burning ends on a more hopeful note. One second applause. For sobriety. You know, I think that there is something to that. <laughs> there is something. That could go either way, actually. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people say Eminem's best albums were when he was on drugs. A lot of people say Mary J. Blige's best albums was when she was having substance challenges. Uh, but I agree with this one. I mean, this, to me, is his best project. And sobriety, you know, really looked good on him. You know, so. All right, we got number 10, Isaiah Rashad. Dochi 9, Alligator Bites Never Heal. Okay, I love this project. This might feel low. This might feel low. Let me see what they got coming up next, but this might be low. This might be the first place where I really detour um, because I think this is one of the best projects that this label has put out. Uh, and let's see, we'll see where this goes. One of the most talked albums of the year, Alligator Bites Never Heal, has launched a new...
that album is better than uh, Mr. Moron and the Big Steppers or uh, Oxymoron. I definitely don't think that album is better than that. And I like that album right there, but it's not better. But let's keep it going. Starring Dochi <clears throat> and is deservedly nominated for Best Rap Album at the 2025 Grammys. TDE's first and so far only female MC could very well go on to dominate hip hop over the next decade. Big facts. One second pause for that sentence. See, I think that I, I think Alligator Bites Never Heal is is better than Sylvia Demo. You know, I'd probably switch these two right here at least. Uh, but let's see. Recently celebrating his 10th anniversary, Isaiah Rashad's debut mixtape expanded the West Coast sound of TDE into the heart of the American South. At its core, Sylvia Demo is indebted to its Southern rap forefathers, but is more introspective and intoxicating. Combined with Rashad's conversational rhymes about adolescent angst, it may be the most underrated project in the TDE canon. Wow. I mean, perhaps. I mean, maybe that speaks to it. I mean, it's, maybe it's underrated to the point where I think that Dochi's album is better than <laughs> Sylvia Demo. Uh, but I understand where they're coming from. And this was a fantastic project, too. Look how consistent these guys are. I mean, to have one artist on your label that can put together a catalog like one of these artists, <laughs> a J-Rock catalog, a Schoolboy Q catalog, an Ab Soul catalog, <laughs> an Isaiah Rashad catalog, a Kendrick Lamar catalog. To have one artist that can do this would be incredible for any label. And for them, for TDE, that's just a standard. Kendrick Lamar, Section 80, this was my... This was the first album that I, this is the album that got me. This album got me, right? When I heard this, I was like, okay. Definitely one of his best. Um, I, I wouldn't put that over Mr. Moran and Big Steppers. That's just my opinion. A lot of y'all probably would, but I actually think Mr. Moran and Big Steppers is actually better than Section 80. <clears throat> Not taking nothing away from Section 80, but I just think Mr. Moran and Big Steppers, it hit me a little bit harder. And I think that that album is, one of the most important albums to uh, us as a people, once we sit down and realize and listen to it, realize how how uh, open it was. Hey, this is a totally different thing, like I said earlier. The release of Section 80 led most people to hearing Kendrick Lamar for the first time as his last independent release gained traction far greater than anybody could have expected. It was an early example of the now legendary rapper's skill for virtuoso storytelling and tackling dark times dark themes with fresh insight. This album also was distributed by Empire. And Ghazi used to tell this story. He's a CEO of Empire, founder of Empire. He would uh, tell a story about how Empire was really early on putting out, on selling mixtapes, on selling mixtapes. Like everyone used to just go drop their projects on Dat Piff and that's how your buzz got built. And eventually they would start selling something. But Empire built their company Pre, like almost like at the onset of streaming. So every, their company is built for a streaming environment. And they decided, they were the ones who pushed to make this project for sale, for sale, instead of just giving it away for, as a free mixtape, which was a standard at that point in time, because from Ghazi's point of view, and he was correct about this, the audience was ready to spend money. They're, they're ready to spend money on iTunes or wherever they're buying their digital music. And once they did that, I don't think TDE ever gave one away again. <laughs> one second applause. Uh, but so that's interesting how uh, this project was almost a free mixtape for people. What's up, guys? My name is Aaron. I founded this company called Breeze. It is a microdosed herb and mushroom. Six, SZA, Control, SZA's debut. The album that proved TDE was more than just a rapper's paradise. SZA de SZA's debut, oh, LP, of Love Lorne Slow Jam. Yeah, that album's fire. <clears throat> That's, that album is one of their best. <clears throat> Definitely fire. I love that album. Super fire. Super fire. Appear to usher in a new era of raw R&B and proved that the label had also unearthed one of the great voices in modern music. Doves in the Wind remains a standout. This is a phenomenal project. I would take Dochi's over this, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah, so I think I would have Dochi at... <laughs> you're bugging. Ain't no way in the world you telling me that you think Dochi album is better than Control. You're wildin'. <laughs> like, no. Dochi album is dope, but it ain't better than Control. 
I mean, I guess to him, but not for me, it's not. Eight, because I definitely am taking Section 80 over Alligator Bryce Never Here, but I'll take Dochi at eight. That would put Control SZA at nine and Isaiah Rashad at 10, but I'm not mad. This is, I mean, this is a, this is almost like which is your favorite kid kind of list now that I'm looking at it. Schoolboy Q's Blank Face 2016. Yeah. While oh. Q has not quite kicked on commercially in the way that Blank Face LP promised back in 2016, <clears throat> the album remains a scorching, ominous, and often psychedelic masterpiece. Q, at his best, has arguably the most engaging voice in hip-hop, so as songs such as Groovy Tony, Straight Ballin', and Ride Out Proof. Yeah, yeah, this, I mean, this uh, is a classic. Uh, um, I don't know if I like that album or Oxymoron better. But both of those albums, I love Blank Face. Oh my God. I love the visuals of it too. The 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 videos of Blank Face is so crazy, man. They did that thing with that. That was oh my God. I love Blank Face, man. Love it. It's a like album. <clears throat> Blank Face is a yes, an unquestionable classic project. Number four, damn. I think this is Kendrick's best album, so I automatically think <laughs> this is a little bit low, but I understand because you still have what? You still have Good Kid, Mad City, and To Pimp a Butterfly, which are artistically renowned, you know, but I, I love this album so much. Further developing some of the ideas and sounds he explored on To Pimp a Butterfly is a more personal project, but no less vast. A aside from being Kendrick's first album to sell over half a million units in his first week, 603,000 to be exact, it wrote the Compton Kingpin into the history books as the first ever non-jazz or classical musician to win a Pulitzer Prize for music, just in case any Drake fans thought about doubting his credentials. One second applause. Number three, SZA, SOS. This album is still dominating. I mean, this album is, this album is a, a, a super favorite. Um, I think it should have won Album of the Year last year at the Grammys. Uh, I'm not mad at this being a number three. The long-awaited sophomore album from TDE's First Lady gave her the status deserving of her talents. The sultry voice singer went from cult queen to mainstream superstar seemingly overnight. As women everywhere appeared to resonate with SOS's themes of female angst, it also spent a remarkable 10 weeks atop the Billboard 200. Big shots, big shots, big shots. One second applause. Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City. The West Coast was back and it was being carried on Kendrick's diminutive shoulders. The blog rap star coming in with the hype of a Dr. Dre cosign was the shot in the arm hip hop needed in the early 2010s as he mixed cinematic storytelling with stacked rhymes and radio friendly hooks without sacrificing authenticity. Good Kid, Mad City still sounds as fresh as ever. I, I'm with this, uh, this number two. So SOS was number three. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Honestly, I probably would have put Blank Face at number three. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I would probably put. Matter of fact, no. I would put this is this is what I would have did. Matter of fact, I'll I'll explain it afterwards. Let's keep it going. But SOS was number three, and and Good Kid, Mad City was number two. And yeah, obviously, the Butterfly is number one. This was actually, uh, the, I talked about this story quite a bit. Like I got, I did this review for Hip Hop DX and. Um, we end up giving it a 4.5. If you read that review now, there are no critiques in that review. <laughs> there are no no critiques <laughs> in the Good Kid, Mad City review. Uh, in retrospect, I think we should have given it a five. Sometimes when you're working in publications, uh, things play out the way that it did. Uh, but the second Kendrick Lamar album that I reviewed was To Pimp a Butterfly, and I was editor-in-chief at that point, and we gave that a five. Uh, so if you look at this catalog, like, I would give Damn a five too, to be honest. I think that Kendrick's catalog is flawless or near flawless uh, uh what they say here a jazz rap masterpiece to pimp a butterfly elevated kendrick lamar above anyone that could be billed as his contemporary with a ruthless interrogation of what it meant to be black in america in the 21st century the album was uh, was to hip-hop what the beatles revolver was to rock and roll and almost a decade on it still swirls with a uh, hypnotic surrealism it's not only the crown jewel of tde's catalog for the best album of the 2010s. One second, applause. Now, honorable mentions. Control System. I don't know how they did this. I don't know. I don't know how they did this. They've got Absol's. Soul Burger at 16. 
and they've got Herbert at 14. And they've got Control System as honorable mention, which is unquestionably his best album. <laughs> right? Control System is Absol's best album. Okay, it just is. You know, I think I, I, I'm not, I haven't done this. I haven't gone and looked at reviews and ratings. I haven't gone to Metacritic to compare, but that album, Control System, that is top, top tier elite, multi layered lyricism. The rabbit hole he sent a generation on, leaning into conspiracy theories or uh, uh, what, as, as uh, Skiz said in the MF Doom video we did the other week. Uh, the occult, which is also his his definition of the occult, was just alternative uh, ideas. Control system is lathered with that, while still being ins inspirational. I think that's a major miss for this list. That is unquestionably one of the top twenty projects in the history of this label. At that point in time, I, not everybody was sold on who the best MC was in TDE. They weren't. <laughs> there was a real debate about whether Absol or Kedrick was a better rapper at that point in time. I think that's a tremendous miss. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, Untitled Unmastered, 2016, honorable mention, that makes sense. J-Rock, Follow Me Home, 2011, that makes sense. Sir Heavy, 2024. Now, this project got overlooked this year because <laughs> uh, uh, it dropped the same day as Like That. <laughs> I think same week. It was around the same time <laughs> as Like That dropped. So, I, you know, that's another album that's worth a listen to. It's a great R&B project. Kendrick Lamar, the Kendrick Lamar EP, 2009. All right, so that's their top 20. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. I think Control System not being in their top 20 is a major, 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 major list. I, I think Control System is top top 10, top 10, top 11 project they've ever put out. You know, so I, I vehemently disagree with that. But overall, I think Sam did a good job on that list. It definitely starts a lot of discussion. Congratulations to Top Dog Entertainment on 20 years of success. Uh, me and Professor Sky have a collaboration that's going to drop. This weekend, maybe next this week. I'm not sure when I'm gonna drop it. We All right. Well, let me make sure y'all go uh, follow him. Yeah, I definitely would have switched them things around. Um, Pimp a Butterfly would be number one. You know, Good Kid, Mad City number two. Damn, oh, it would be um, Mr. Morale, Big Steppers would be number three, and then Dan would be number four, and then whatever else comes probably would be. Uh, Blank face, and then uh, a bunch of whoever comes after that. I'm not gonna go down the list of like, but <clears throat> that's what it would have been for me. Um, but control system definitely would have been in there. I would I would have took out. I probably would have took out the other album, not Soul Burger, the other one. I can't remember the name. But that was a good, pretty good, pretty good list. Very interesting. Uh, very very interesting. Um, video. Make sure y'all go follow the company, man. All that good stuff. And um, yeah, man. I'll see y'all. Y'all have yourself a good night. Yell in the morning. Bye.